Hello and welcome to Patterns for Simplicity with Dataflow Templates. In this talk, we will introduce a two-way approach to shortening time to value from data projects at your organization. My name is Justina, and I'm a product marketer based in San Francisco. And I'm here today with my colleague, David, who is a product manager in our London office. Data is core to everything we do at Google. From our mission statement to organize the world's information and make it universally accessible and useful, to working with Google Cloud's customers to unlock data-powered innovations at large scale. As of today, there is a substantial gap between the data potential and the value it can provide. In fact, two-thirds of data is never analyzed. Not surprisingly, only one third of companies agree that they have truly unlocked the value of their data. To close this gap, at Google Cloud Data Analytics, we have developed a two-way approach. First, we make it easy to move data to cloud with Dataflow templates. In just a minute, David will explain what Dataflow templates are, and he will also show a demo. Second, we accelerate time to value with design patterns. And design patterns are multi-product solutions that leverage the best of Google and our rich uh, partner ecosystem. These solutions bring together product capabilities with design methodology, open source ready to deploy code, reference architectures, and data models. With design patterns, you can greatly accelerate your business outcomes. Data patterns help close data value gap. However, there are challenges before you can get started. Data needs to be in cloud first. That's why in this talk, we're also going to cover the data journey for, to cloud and how to shorten the time uh, with data flow templates. David, over to you. Thanks, Justina. Um, hi, everybody. My name is David. As Justina mentioned, I'm a product manager at Google for Data Analytics. Um, as she was describing, right, so to close the value gap, the data value gap, you first need to actually being able to move the data into the cloud, right? So basically what we have, what we can see here on this slide is that the, the actual data movement products come with many challenges, right? So associated to the to that process, right? First, if we divide the patterns or the typical ways of moving the data into three areas, we have first data ingestion, right? So here it is more about the trade-off and the challenges we have about uh, not being able to scale fast enough, or actually the trade-off between uh, whether you want to focus on real-time ingestion or scaling into more into the batch mode, right? And also about the multiple ways of um, uh, mechanisms to, to ingest and multiple connectors and, and the technical depth that you typically have when you integrate with, uh, for example, on-prem, or um, old systems as well, right? Then we move into the data replication. So that's where we are trying to replicate the operational data into the, the cloud uh, analytical system to actually derive insights, right? Here, the challenges are about the data is not fresh or we can actually keep, keep up with the, with the flow of data, right? Also, the, the, the complexity of the setup and maintenance and actually, having all these versions uh, across different systems, it makes it very complex to maintain, right? <clears throat> That's on the replication side. Then we move into the data integration. Here is on where we actually enable more kind of what we call closing the loop. So in terms of uh, inter integrating and generating the insights from the analytical engine, for example, from our Cloud Data Warehouse BigQuery, or we can actually connect back to the system, right? So. This is where we get involved into transformations, right? Where we actually not just ingest, but also apply transformations, uh, typically ATL type of approach or ELT type of approach, right? And again, there is a huge diversity of different data sources. So again, another challenge here, right? Another way of look at these challenges is uh, as a way to try to simplify all these um, areas is to, to look from the the data sources and the destinations, so the sinks and the sources, uh, also the, um, the type of data movement patterns that I describe it, right? So ingestion, replication, or integration uh, with the ETL or ELT type of approaches to really close the loop with this continuous intelligence uh, concept. 
and also the, the skills, right? So we have uh, the organizations, they have teams, actually, they need to maintain and build this, um, these uh, pipelines and frameworks, right? So we have different approaches, right? We may have um, existing skills on um, frameworks like Apache Beam, like SQL, Apache Spark, or maybe we have more like a skills into no or low code type of approach on where they really want to uh, get more into drag and drop uh, type of functionality, right? So again, we need to keep into account all these things to really being able to come up with a proper vision to simplify that data movement, right? The key point here is simplicity, right? So the way we see the or vision at Google Cloud, um, again, for data movement is in those, in those three building blocks, right? We talk about data ingestion, talk about data replication and data integration. Data ingestion, we want to leverage simplicity because that's really about connecting the dots between the external systems, whatever other sources we have, to place, to move the data into the cloud so we can start action, making actionable, right? To close that data value gap that Justina mentioned. So we have different, different systems here. We have uh, cloud native services like a PubSub and Dataflow that helps you to close that gap. And also we have the systems uh, with no code and minimal uh, coding uh, involvement like a BigQuery data transfer service, leveraging, for example, either or native connectors or actually partner connectors through uh, other tools like a Fivetran, right? We, if we move into the next one, remember data ingestion simplicity, right? If we move into the next one, uh, data replication, this is more about what we call uh, change data capture, right? So we have an operational system like uh, an Oracle database or MySQL database. And then we have these transactions on the front end systems uh, about, I don't know, sales or whatever type of business we, we are running. We want to capture all these uh, changes in the data and then replicate them into our analytical system to then being able to derive uh, insights, right? So for this one, again, we have uh, data stream is one of our products to actually help you into uh, bring the data into the cloud, right? Uh, again, this is simplicity because you have a single product and with the challenges that I mentioned before, you have connectors, you have really the expertise, you have a managed service that you don't need to maintain and, and have up, upgrades into the into the services and all the stuff, right? Then we move into the, the one at the, the right, data integration. This is what I mentioned, right? It's all about closing the loop, continuous intelligence, ETL, ELT is trying to actually um, transform the data, join the data with other things, apply machine learning. Um, and again, here we have different approaches with, with no code, uh, for example, with data fusion, and also open source, uh, open source alternatives like with um, Dataproc for Spark, right? But the key aspect here is to actually work with the continuous intelligence, which or cloud native services is data, right? Very important. Really important as well here is that we need to realize that for the data integration, when we want to have that continuous intelligence, we, we're gonna end up with a complex system regardless, right? So we want developers that are experts into that area being able to focus on that. So we want simplicity there, but being transparent, you're not gonna have that same level of transparency as you could get into data ingestion, right? Or even on data replication. The, Data integration is complex per se, right? So that, that's a fact. So now if we focus on the data ingestion, right? So simplicity, that's where the data flow templates come into place that Justina mentioned, and that really helps to close that value gap by ingesting the data, moving the data, automating all this process, right? So you can see here that these are really the, um, the actual, they're part of the patterns, as, as Justina mentioned, right? Because these are accelerators and part of the process to really come up with that use case, you need to move the data, right? So data flow templates help you to close that gap by actually uh, not having to code or implement um, uh, with an SDK, the logic that you need to do, because the logic is as simple as copy this from A to B, okay? So the focus uh, is obviously on data flow templates. Um, what are data flow templates, right? As I mentioned, the turnkey click to deploy assets. Um, so we actually have more than 40 Google and partner uh, support templates, which are in GA. Uh, we have all sorts of uh, connectors, right? So we have a Chris Spanner, we have PubSub for uh, real time, 
and you actually can customize them. You can take the, the template and uh, change it and, out, uh, and customize it for your own needs, right? So that's very powerful as well. They're open source, so you can actually clone them and, and iterate through them. Um, it's, it's really you can go in, into whatever preferred platform you need, and they're extensible, as I mentioned, right? But as a starter, you don't need to code. You just need to go, and I will just briefly show you uh, in the next slide how it, from which point you can actually um, interact with the templates, right? They are pervasive, uh, pervasive, sorry, pervasive. They are everywhere, right? So the beauty about data flow templates is that you don't need to implement them because they are being used in from other products and you don't really need to know really how to implement them, right? So if we move to the next one, you can see here those ex two examples uh, from the UI, from the Google Console UI. First one is from the data flow uh, area within the console, you can create a job from a template on where you add the parameters like the, the, the source being uh, a pops up uh, topic, being a GCS packet with Avro, Parquet, uh, as I mentioned, 40 plus uh, uh, templates for you to start with. That's one way you can go directly into the data, data flow or you can actually use them from other uh, services. In this case, you can see here Dataplex, right? It's pervasive. We have um, data flow templates that can be used from Dataplex. Uh, Dataplex is actually our data fabric service product. Is uh, You can enable data mesh type of um, architectures uh, by centralizing your lakes and the governance of the lakes, but then uh, federating these pipelines, right? And one of the things you can do uh, one of the ways you can actually enable that is by using templates, right? Because it's a way to have um, a way to actually uh, enable these federated teams or data teams to really use these templates to move data along, to actually load the data into BigQuery. All these, let's call it mundane tasks that you, you repeat all over again, then you can use these templates, right? And again, the key point here with templates is about simplicity, right? And the starting point, it could be from the data flow you are in the console or from other products like dataplex right and we are extending that and and that's the point about templates being so easy that they're kind of going everywhere right and very important they can be customized so you can take a, a template and then clone it and then change it and customize for your needs right also another important aspect is that some of these templates they have features like uh, you can apply udf um, uh, user-defined functions, for example, with JavaScript, you can you can apply transforms, very simple transforms, but you have that option uh, in case you don't want to clone and cost and customize the entire uh, template. You you still have that optional feature of embedding UDX inside the the templates. Very useful, right? So with that, um, you can hopefully now get started with um, both data flow templates to actually bring the data into the cloud and also with patterns to actually close the, the data value gap. Um, so uh, I leave here a couple of links for you to connect and then start exploring. And with that, I hope you enjoyed the session and yeah, uh, thank you.